I think we'll probably be okay with um, getting started. Um, and I will um, start a little bit by um, introducing Rachel, um, who is a current student here at Chain University. Um, and I met Rachel um, during her recruitment to come to Cheney, um, was able to, you know, talk to her and her mom um, and um, really um, um, was enthused by her interests in the sciences and what she wanted to do. Her mom is in the medical field as well. And her mom is also a student at, at, um, at Cheney University. So we have two generations um, um, pursuing uh, an academic career here. Um, but was really excited for um, Rachel, especially in seeing her journey um, and her persistence in terms of sticking with it and wanted her to be able to share out um, with us and to have an opportunity for um, Dr. Lu to help uncover some things through some questions that she'll post to, to, to Rachel so that you know we might be able to provide some, some guidance here as well um, to her as an aspiring STEM researcher. So um, Rachel, whenever you are ready to begin, we are ready to take in what you have to share with us. All right. Thank you all for joining, joining me today. Uh, my name is Rachel Eziamaka. I am a second semester junior here at the first HBCU, Chain University of Pennsylvania. I was also the former Ms. Cheney of the 2020-2021 school year. So last year, I am currently a biology pre-med major, and my pursuit was to possibly uh, go to grad school in order to pursue a neuroscience degree. So, yeah. So, um, what more would I need to say about myself, you know, but okay, I'm always a STEM major. So the reason why I decided to choose STEM was more because when I was younger, I've always wanted to become a doctor, but growing up, um, it wasn't until I was like uh, 16, 17 where I realized I started knowing what I wanted to do. So it all started with um, my father, actually. He was actually a RN nurse pursuing to become a nurse practitioner. But unfortunately, like around 2017, he was um, diagnosed with ALS. And if anyone knows ALS, like short for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as the Garrett disease, how it can be a very deadly disease because one is a neuro, it's a neurogenetic disease. And on top of that, it usually affects men from the age of 40 to 70. And on top of that, there's no cure. So it's basically medication that is given, physical therapy. At the end, there's no cure to the end. So to see firsthand how much he suffered and um, eventually um, passed away in June 2018, before I reached my senior year in high school, it really inspired me of wanting to pursue uh, going to the neural the neuro direction and wanting to like, you know, find a discovery and try to find a cure. Because though there's a lot of research going on on most diseases like multiple sclerosis, um, epilepsy, but like most of these neurofunctional diseases do not have any cure. They just use medication for it. Or right now there's being research done how CBD can actually um, complement the symptoms of ALS, but at the same time, it's like putting a Band-Aid on top of a wound. It's not really finding the cause of it. So that's what I'm trying to do when I graduate here at Chain University, so yeah. So Rachel, you wanna tell us a little bit about, um, about your, 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 your journey um, and um, Share, share with us some, some personal experiences along those journey and some of the classes that you know, you've taken and, and some challenges or you know, some of the easy things as well. Okay, so I can say being a biology pre-med student is not easy at all, especially when you're taking like a lot of courses like uh, gen chemistry, gen bio, and even though it's just like the basics, it can still be a little confusing. But as you get a little, um, more advanced, like organic chemistry, as we all know, organic chemistry can be like a killer in a sense, you either know it or you don't know it, you know? And as time goes by, like uh, this semester, I just took biochemistry one and that in physiology as well. So from seeing it, it can kind of get discouraging sometimes because even though this is what you need in the future, sometimes you really ask yourself, am I really going to use all these things? Is it really what I need for the future? And how is this going to benefit me and help me as well? 
One of my struggles, I would say personally for myself is basically like physics in a sense, because physics as well is a requirement for a bio, for a bio pre-med major. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the best um, person when it comes to physics and stuff. And it was kind of hard for me as well, because unfortunately for me, I didn't do so well in the class and stuff, you know, and it can kind of be discouraging and whether it makes you feel like whether you're not smart or not, uh, whether this is really for me, um, can I really be successful in life? But it's really amazing when you have people by your side always rooting for you and knowing that if you just keep going and putting your best heart and mind that you will succeed. On top of that, I also learned the importance of networking because though your grades can also help you as well, it's who you know and who you connect with as well. So this summer I was able, a little different what I wanted to do, but I like to try new things. So I was able to do a summer internship by the University of Delaware, um, more based on um, environmental science and funded by the National Science Foundation. And through it, um, through the three months, I was able to like learn a lot, especially about um, research because I don't know if I mentioned before, I originally wanted to go to um, medical school, but I feel like through this research program, it actually kind of gave me like an eye opener of what I really want to do with myself because I was thinking if I went to medical school, I could only tell you what your problem is. But if I took the research route, I can actually try to discover what I'm trying to look for and do more research based upon it. So, yeah. I mean, that's exciting at, uh, at the early college year that you get the internship, actually try out the uh, careers that if that's one, what you really wanted. So uh, are you, how did you learn on those opportunities? Did you, do you want to shoot? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, it's definitely. Um, I'm definitely grateful because like I said, though it's not exactly what I'm trying to attack, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's still the experience of whether you would go uh, somewhere else. So those simple skills of like how being able to actually like measure chemicals and stuff and how to be able to dilute it using um, using like a, a centrifuging machine, you know, also having being able to like do manuscripting, also to be able to do a, a project and like how to, sorry. <laughs> How to do a research report and on top of that how to make a project and showing what you did throughout the whole summer summer improving it many even though here i'm in college you don't have those kind of opportunities on um, giving to you give the hand it over to you so to be able to gain that within these last three months during the summer was truly an um truly an honor and a blessing as well on top of that i also want to further myself um, especially during the summer that i was doing research that Re right now I'm trying to see if I can possibly get into uh, the neuroscience uh, research program at Duke University. I saw that they actually were doing it uh, two years in a row and they're planning to do it this well this summer, but there hasn't been any information put up yet. But I know that they are working with the National Science Foundation because being funded by them. So I'm trying to see if I can possibly put myself in that gear. And then also it can also give me like a broader experience about trying to understand because even though I'm here in Cheney, I don't have like the whole background um, knowledge of what, how the brain works. Like I'm not a neuroscience major, so I don't truly know much, but I'm saying through that, it'll definitely give me an eye opener, allow me to see what I want to do within the future, so. And it seems you have a lot of uh, thought of about your uh, what you plan to do and uh, you are working towards it. Too, so that's uh, great. And uh, you also said that when you're working on that, you get a lot of support. You get people on the side to help you through. So do you want to provide some example when you have the challenges and uh, your friends, your uh, faculty member, how they help you through those challenges? Yeah, definitely, because it takes a lot of sacrifice that many people just won't understand. And they're like, oh, you're always so busy. You're always working. You're always doing this. You're always studying. But at the end of the day, like when you have a goal in your in your head, you know, especially me being my junior year, I don't have enough time. You know, like even though I'm going to I have basically a year and a half if you it's how you spend it it's how you use your time so i'm saying to myself even though people like oh you're always thinking about the future i think about the future because like what can i do now in order to better myself in the future so even though i make sacrifices while everybody's having fun 
you know, I may be working a lot, at least I know I will reap what I sow at the end, you know? And on top of that, like, I have many, many great mentors, many, many people that believe in me, like, even Miss Kizzy as well. Like, she's, like she said, she's seen my progression from, like, a freshman up to being a junior. Like, even here in the school as well, like, I ran as the queen of my university. Why? Because I want to make a change and a difference. And though, on top of that, I was the youngest, um, I was the youngest to only compete, but to also win as well. And though this was during COVID times, I really did my best in order to give what I was, to work with what I was given with, and at the end of the day, exemplify and, you know, showcase the good, the school in a very good um, positive spotlight. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Rachel, I dropped my information in the chat. I'm five miles from Duke University and have a few contacts there. I may be able to at least get you in a in the front of the line to at least talk to the neuro, neuroscience folks that run that program. And my company evaluates this, the Society for Neurosciences Scholars Program, of which if you shoot me an email, I'll at least tell you about that because you may be interested in that program. And so that's I just wanted to connect the face to that random chat message you got. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I think I also saw Dr. Lewis had his hand up. I think he wants to ask a question. I, I do, but I don't want to. I don't want to inter mess up the flow. I don't, if, um, no, no, go ahead. Honestly, okay. I don't know what to say because I was just rather just be asked questions. <laughs> just well, ask I was curious. Um, was the experience you had this summer part of something called an REU, a research experience for undergraduates, or not? It was. It was part of it because, like I said, it was. Um, it was stipend through the National Science Foundation. Okay. But this was more towards like environmental science. So I was working like in soil, environmental soil chemistry. So like I said, very, very different from what I'm trying to pursue. But I've always had the kind of mindset where it's like, why put yourself in one box when you when the opportunity is given to you, why not explore? Because like you guys were chatting when you first came in, that many people don't understand that. There's so much more in the medical field and the science field than just trying to pursue a medical degree. And I used to have that mindset too, cause I was like, oh, if I don't become a doctor, I'm not gonna become successful in life, you know? Cause they always put the ideology like, oh, if you wanna make money, if you wanna be successful, if you don't want to like suffer a lot, you have to become a medical doctor. So he was like, that's the only way. But when you branch off and you're very passionate about something, it's a little bit more easier to go in a different direction than go to like the one narrow mind direction, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And also, it sounds like you learned not only are all those skills completely transferable to completely different fields. So that's fantastic. You're just learning skills that are transferable. But it sounds like you also really got to focus on the science process, like yeah. how science actually works yeah. with hypotheses and doing experiments to test those hypotheses. And that's really important. That also transfers to, you know, to all the STEM fields. So that's brilliant. So I really appreciate it. It sounds like it was great. And I'm glad you did it. So. No, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely a different eye opener. Um, from being here on campus, you know, just, just seeing a different point of view, so. <laughs> uh, yes, Dr. Vivian. Hi, Rachel, how are you? I'm good, um, how are you? I'm good, I just wanna say that I commend you for the work that you're doing and for the inspiration with your dad. Um, although that was something I'm sure was pretty difficult. I'm a daddy's girl, so I understand what it means to lose your father, so that you're still persevering. Um, is amazing, but I wanted to kind of change just change just a little bit because I'm coming from the mentor um, perspective, and I want to know, even though you were inspired through your father, do you think that mentoring has pay, has played a major part in persevering in the STEM fields as you're doing to go through with neuroscience? Um, yes, in a way, but also my faith, but mentoring more like you would when you think mentoring you would think someone more like in the science field but um I'll answer all questions after this I'm sorry I can't do that <laughs> sorry it's okay but, um, <laughs> as for um mentoring you would think more in the science field but surprisingly not me I feel mm -hmm. like it's just having people that are very supportive because I'm not gonna lie 
I am not perfect and I make a lot of mistakes and stuff, you know. But you're young, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I know, but like sometimes it's like it's wrong to be human because I'm not gonna lie, like I've made some mistakes and I'll just share this experience. Um so I know at the end of the day, like the importance of being um timely, punctual and representing yourself, you know, but at the end of the day, we all have our shortcomings, and this is one of my shortcomings, you know. So I remember we I was taking this um healthcare class here on campus was like very, very new. And on top of that, um, we were shadowing like a close nearby hospital near us. So that certain week was like very, very crazy for me because that week, the day I was supposed to go, I was basically, I had to like get tested for TB because um, I just got a new job in order to support myself as well. So the day I had to get tested was the same day I had to go to the hospital to shadow. So I emailed the person I was going to meet. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to be an hour late. But just, you know, just to document it and let them know, like, I'm not, like, showing up late for no reason or, like, not showing up at all. I was just trying to, like, be communicative. But also that week, I was also, like, studying pretty late because I had an anatomy test, like, two days prior. Also, you know, anatomy can be a lot of material and stuff. So when you're trying to, like, cram as well for exam, you're trying to, like, gain as much knowledge. So... As I, was, as I went there, um, because my body was just like very naturally tired and stuff, because like I said, I'm human as well. Um, and she put me on the couch, so I feel like that's kind of set me up for failure <laughs> of how tired I was. But um, I was like kind of like dozing off a little bit and she caught me. And I felt super bad because at the end of the day, like I don't just represent myself, I represent my school. And I was like, you know, apologizing to her and stuff, you know, like, you know, I said, this is not me. Like, I'm truly sorry and stuff, you know, this is just like a really, really rough day. But at the end of the day, like, I can understand she was looking out for me um, when she, she did speak to me at the end of the day. And she was looking at me for like someone who's like a black woman, because, you know, like they say, like, um, not stereotyping, but usually it's more harder for people of color to be put into pos higher up positions than compared to like, uh like a like a white counterpart you know so um afterwards I thought like you know I was supposed to see her the following week and everything and I thought we were like really cool I was like you know like I'm really sorry I know first impressions are everything but afterwards it just afterwards it kind of exploded you know and it kind of like really affected me because at the end of the day it was like I was truly sorry you know it was not intentionally at all and sometimes it makes you wonder like oh, well, this is what it's like in the real world, then I don't mm -hmm. want to be in that kind of situation. Gotcha. You know? But um, I realized that it's really the people who truly, truly love you. Like it might not be like a mentor, like I said, in the science program, but it's the ones that really like love you and the ones that truly um, believe in you and supporting you because at the end of the day, you can only believe in yourself so much, but sometimes like it's always good to hear like a reminder of like, oh, remember when you did this and you did that and you did this, that and the third, you know, like don't forget and stuff, you know, cause sometimes you can feel really bad and talk down to yourself, you know, but I really feel like it's the people in my life that are like, even though there's like ordinary people and stuff, like not in higher positions, but the ones that truly love me is what may, keeps me keep going what I want to do as well. Also, I can't see myself doing anything else. So, <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I got you. Do Do you have a student network that you you know, like a group of students that you study with that are like minded as you are? Do you lean on each other for support? Um, we do, but I feel like at the same time, because like we're all older and we're juniors now, that mm -hmm. um we are kind of too busy for each other like we try to make time and like to study but like I have my own things like I said I work and go to school as well to support myself other people might be doing like clubs and campuses so it's just not the same but like also like not procrastinating trying to be on top of things and stuff you know because everything counts at the end Absolutely. but um <laughs> trust me <laughs> experience <laughs> But I mean, but you're I mean, learning I, and sounds like you've matured quite a bit. So that's, that's amazing. Thank you. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, all I try to do is do my best. And um, like I said, I don't represent just myself, but I represent God. I represent my mother. I represent the schools, so everything I do, though it's being watched, I try to be the best character and best version of myself that I can be and grow every single day. So absolutely. 
Thank you for answering my questions. You're so welcome. So I'm just going to read some of the uh, chats. Um, kind of, okay. So I, I know you said, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Lewis, you said, um, I mentioned how including tough love when needed, this must come from a relationship of trust and sincerity. So definitely, because sometimes as much as tough love can be, you definitely um, <laughs> need to hear it, you know? But to me at the same time, I feel like there's a difference between tough, tough love and talking down on somebody, you know? Because at the end of the day, of course, you might the person might be upset with you and might tell you directly but if you don't leave if you don't leave that room feeling good at the end of the day then it's like what are you really gaining you know and i've had experiences like that as well where i was truly at fault but it was also due to miscommunication but at the end of the day the person did not see it that way and saw it more as like well you lied to me and you took you proceeded this way and if you knew you couldn't do this you shouldn't have done this and it's just like but in my eyes, it's like it was not intentionally. It was just truly, um, it was just truly like I was busy and stuff, you know, like I'm not gonna lie, I do take up more than I can swallow. I'm trying to work on that, you know, just trying to like juggle what I can do. But at the end of the day, like I feel like if someone's gonna mentor you, they should be direct and honest with you, but at the same time, not make you leave their room feeling way worse than you did when you walk you first walked in, because then why are you there in the first place, you know? So yeah. It's for Jasmine's. Okay. I don't know if anyone has any, or do you need to have any prerequisites to join the program? I'm sorry. Um, second. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, San Mono. Uh, which, pro uh, which prerequisites program are you referring to? Here. Um, Mr. Widudu. Is he there or no? So, so you can you can you can also unmute if you have a question to ask um Rachel directly. You can unmute and, and go ahead and ask her. Um if that would be better. Yeah, I think that'd be easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, okay. okay. So he, he might actually um, be on the road. I think he's talking about, um, um, I, I, I'm going to assume that he's talking about um, the program that you're currently in, um, probably at Cheney, um, if there were any prerequisites for you to get into the program or. Program. Oh, this was more of a class. This was more of a class. So it was a healthcare and philosophy course. Okay. So it was just trying to like, um, it was more philosophical, but also give us like the component of understanding, like, how does a doctor think and like, you know, the importance, like, for example, like, for example, like, um, it giving a scenario case, like, let's say you have four people who are need like one needs a liver, one needs a heart, one needs a kidney transplant, like and a brain transplant, I don't know, but you get the point. And then there's a person next door and they're completely healthy. So like, what would you do in that situation? Would you kill that healthy person in order to save all the, the rest of the four of them or do you let them die? But um, different scenarios in that case as well, like for philosophy, but in the healthcare aspect, it was to kind of give us like an experience and having the opportunity of sh um, shouting different like people. Like for me, I had the opportunity, to, I was very lucky to have the opportunity to um, shadow a neuro, a neuro, a neuroscience on um, physical therapist, you know? So it was like just very interesting to see. Also it was a little emotional for me as well because it kind of reminded me of my father. But um, I realized how important physical therapists are as well, because many people don't really think they are, but they're a very like huge key component because most of those people, as we know, physical therapy are for those who like have lack of movement, who are trying to like get back to normal lives, trying to walk straight, trying to be stabilized and stuff, you know, but it takes a lot of like muscle movement, it takes a lot of power in order to do what they're doing and stuff and actually they really inspire and help these patients that are trying to get their lives back together. So through that, it kind of like gave me an eye opener. And then another experience I got to do at the um, at the uh, 
hospital was get to research and manager of like all the research that goes on in um, the hospital. And it also gave me an eye opener too to see how beautiful, like how amazing and important those who are like kind of behind the scenes are, because if it wasn't for them, the hospital and to me would kind of be in shambles, like for example. So I found out like the blood bank, like though they don't um, make a lot of money to me, they're very part, like usually when you think about the hospital is like one body and every everybody has their own part of what to do. So the blood bank actually can tell you through like testing, testing it out, whether you have like a tick, if there's a disease or something, you know, but if it wasn't for them, the doctor would not be able to tell the patient what they have, you know, but I feel like they do so much work for such low money. And I realized that because of them is how the hospital is able to function, how it's able to go around, but they don't get a lot of credit like they, they don't get a lot of credit like they should, which is another thing where I think a lot of people like to go into the medical route and the research route as well, because I always be even me before, but I feel like the program that I did this summer kind of broke my concept as well. Like, I always feel like in the media, doctors are always glorified. And don't get me wrong, doctors are amazing for what they do. But usually I feel like we people who are PhDs are kind of looked down upon. But when you think about it, like COVID, it really showed us that how much research is important because even though the doctors were there, they couldn't really do much, but if it wasn't for the research that was done, then how would we have the vaccine or the booster shot that's going on right, right now? So was, I think as people's eyes are being open, like COVID really opened a lot of people's eyes, it actually shows that even though being a medical doctor is important, important being a researcher is just as important as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and another thing I realized too is that I think another reason why most people are not really um, familiar with um, a lot of things out there because there's not a lot of knowledge given out before they go to college. So I was doing like a lot of research. I wish I knew this before I got into college, but it is what it is. So I was looking at this um, TikTok and this girl was saying how she's basically getting accepted to medical at the, medical school at the age of 19. I'm just like, um, you must have been like crazy smart. Like, you know, basically she did this thing called um, EAP. I forget what it stands for. Basically, it's like a program where it actually teaches you unless you take the courses that you need in order to become like a medical doctor. And then also through the program, you might not even have to take the um, MCAT exam, you know? So she basically took what she needed, did the clinicals, and that's why she's able to graduate early and go to medical school at such an early age. But a lot of people don't know that kind of information because they think the only way is to like graduate from college, graduate from high school, go to college for four years, take all these courses, but at the end of the day, even half of the courses that you're taking, you don't need it. Like, why, would I, why do I need physics? Why do I need statistics? You know, like those kind of things, like what's it going to do for my future? But unfortunately, these are the kind of courses that we need to take in order to continue on and what we want to do next. Another thing I realized, oh yeah, same as law school, because they said pre-law is basically useless, you know, <laughs> so there's no point. But um, another thing I realized is that um, phlebotomy, so basically drawing of blood, basically that can also help you, like if you want to become a, um, a lab tech, that can also open the doors for you as well, because through the shadow experience I had, I was thinking about it, though they just basically draw people's blood, there's a high demand of them right now. And they get paid like a pretty decent amount, like 16 to $20 as well. But through experience and years, you can actually grow within that and then become a lab tech, which can make like $25 to $40 as well. But many people don't know that. Or also becoming like a surgical tech. So a lot of people don't know, like, like surgical techs, even though they're just um, on the sidelines and help the doctor um, prepare, they make a good amount of money. They make like up to five to six figures. And it's not that much of schooling compared to trying to be a doctor. 
And a lot of people feel like I said before, a lot of people feel like if I don't become a doctor, I will not be successful. But the thing is, there's just so many jobs out there that don't require you in order to get a medical degree. And it even takes less years that you can still be successful or becoming a physician assistant. Many people don't know, but like being a physician assistant is only six years because you have four years of bachelor's and then two years of I guess you would say grad school, you know, but then after that, you're making, you have a really good flexible schedule. You're making six figures. You work like three days out of the week and you're, and basically, you know, you're, you're basically a doctor because the information that a doctor would give, you can give the, you can give the same information to a patient as well, but you're not, they don't consider you important because you're just a doctor. If you're just a physician assistant, you're not, you don't have the title as doctor, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, they also play an important component as well, but it's just like to, it's, I just feel like because there's so much lack, in, from, lack of information out there that many people don't know about, but I feel like if they were told, like, do you hear some of the options that you can do that I feel like a lot of people will like, you know, take a different branch or say like, oh, maybe I can do this, maybe I can do that as well. So, yeah. I think so. Um, when I when I think about that, um, Rachel, I, I think about the number of of um, students who first initially are interested in STEM, and somehow along the way, um, because they are they they seem to be very fixed on I want to be a doctor and that's it, without realizing that there are so many various pathways. Yeah. Um, and other fields that are open to them um, in STEM. You talked about research as a lab technician. You also talked about some shorter pathways um, that might be um, more open to others who are interested. I think um, being able to provide that yeah. information that's out there is, would be really, really helpful, um, especially in helping students be able to continue to persist because you know it, it doesn't necessarily have to be one or nothing, one thing or nothing. There are so many various options there. Um, yeah. You 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 um, got some. Um, really, really good um, resources that were shared in the chat with you. Yeah, um, I, I, I save I save some of them so that I'll, I'm able to share them with you after you. Um, and what's not. So we are really um, happy that you had the time today to kind of talk to us a little bit about your own personal journey, um, which is just beginning, I have to tell you, <laughs> right? Um, um, you know that we are going to all be behind you to most definitely stick with it so that you can realize um, your dream um, mm -hmm. and be able to, to contribute, right? Um, you have a really good story. You know why you're in this. You know, you've, you've seen that research is needed for a lot of the newer diseases that are out there. Um, yeah. And I am looking forward to seeing something that's discovered or by, um, by Dr. Rachel um, one day. <laughs> by the grace of God. <laughs> And then one more thing, I think the hugest thing is um, passion, because if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to go far at all. You know, like you're easily, you're just going to miss out, you know, or even if you go all the way, you're never going to be happy in what you do. So it's just very important to at least know what you do, what you want to do in your life before you can get further ahead. Because like, just like a college degree, there's many people who go to school for one thing and then in their life, they realize they didn't want to do this thing at all and it isn't completely different, but it's the same thing STEM. Make sure whatever you do, make sure you're 100% passionate about it because if you're not, you're not going to go far at all. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, um, Dr. Lou, for helping us with facilitating some questions um, to Rachel to get the conversation started. Um, really appreciate it. Posted in our chat is our link to our next session. Um, we're going to um, try to close us out with some racial healing along what we're doing with our racial healing circles, and then we'll wrap up. For today believe it or not we're at the end of our program almost um, and then look forward most definitely to re-engaging again tomorrow but you know we're not quite done yet so please access the link to the next session um, in the chat and we will see you over there well thank you all very much i really appreciate